If you open your Bibles and joining me there in our scripture reading, thank you so much for that scripture reading there in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The last book in the Bible, the last chapter in the Bible. And we begin to study in our Sabbath school on the book of Revelation. Amen? Yes. There, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. And the spirits and the bride say what? No. And let him who hears say? No. And let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. It's like an echo. You can, you can hear, come, come, come. The Spirit and the bride say, come. And he who hears say, come. And he who thirsts can come. And whoever desires, come and come. It's like an echo from all sides inviting us to come. From the left to the right. I don't know if you've been in a place where there's great echo. And you say something and it just bounces off again and again and again. And God is in inviting us. doesn't matter from what part of life you're from or from where you come from. He's inviting us to come, come, come. It's a chain of invitations. And with this in mind, I like to just ask, who invited you to come? Who gave you the invitation to accept Jesus into your heart, into your life? Somebody must have given you the, the invitation. Somebody must have given you the good news. How did, you, how did the gospel come to you? I want you to take a minute <clears throat> and with the person next to you, just share how the gospel came to your personal life came to your home, came to your family, just, just share with the person next to you. How, how did the gospel come to you? Go, let, let, let's go ahead and do that. Share with the person next to you how Jesus came to your life. How, how did the gospel come? We can, go, we can go on and on in sharing how the gospel came to our home, how the gospel came to our lives. How did the gospel come to, your, to you, Dale? Generations. 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 How about to the August? How did the, how did the good news come to your family or, or to you particularly? I'm sorry? Through your folks? They came to the church. You know, the gospel came to me through my parents as, as, as well. Through my parents. The gospel comes to every single one of us in different ways. The gospel came to my grandfather when a Catholic priest gave him a Bible. He took the Bible home, read it for himself, and received the gospel. We know, my wife and I know of a sister who received the gospel from the magazine Science of the Time that she found in a dumpster. And that's how she began an, an understanding and received the gospel. If you join me there in John chapter 1, 
John chapter 1, verse 35. John chapter 1. Here, John the Baptist is pointing his disciples to Jesus. John chapter 1. Verse 35. It says, again, the next day, John stood with his two disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speaking, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is, which is to say when translated teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah, you shall be called Cephas. So, so, so there we see Andrew is invited by Jesus to come. Where are you staying? Well, come and see. He finds out this is the Messiah. This is of who John the Baptist was, was preaching about and talking about. This is who I've read in the scriptures. And what does he do? He go finds his brother. And says, hey, we found the Messiah. Come. Come and see. Andrew was invited. Then he invited. Andrew was invited himself to come. And when he came and was filled with, with Christ and, and, and the, the news of the gospel, he went and invited others. Just look at the next verse there in verse 43. It continues... There, John, chapter 1, verse 43, it says, Then, no, the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip, and said to him, Follow me. Again, he's invited, Come. Now, Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and said to him, We found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, What? Come check it out for yourself. Come and see. Nathanael was invited, then he invites someone. So my question is, who are you going to give the invitation to come? Most of you, you were sharing a little bit earlier of how you received the, 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 the invitation. And maybe you had, maybe there is somebody here who has not given their heart to God. Just you being here, how did you get here? In this building, in this church. Did somebody invite you? Did you happen to walk by and you just saw and were curious? If that's the case, then the Holy Spirit brought you here. But somehow you are here, you receive the gospel personally or, or in your family. So now the question is, who are you going to give the invitation to come to Jesus? And if we are beginning this new year, I want you, with the same person or somebody different, share with them who you want to bring to the feet of jesus this year is there somebody on your mind a relative a friend a neighbor is there somebody i want you to to at this time in the same way take a minute and just share with the person next to you who you want to bring to the feet of jesus this year go ahead and go ahead and do that if it's hard, <laughs> maybe we need to start thinking of who we want to bring.
I've noticed that there is less conversation. And I hope that that hurts a little bit. Because we should be as eager to share the news of Jesus as we are as when we received it. Amen? Amen. There, there are people in my uh, family that I want to share the gospel. There are people down my street in my neighborhood that need to hear the gospel. If you go back to Revelation, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17... Back to, <clears throat> to our scripture reading, there in Revelation 22, verse 17, you can, you can see the invitation. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come, and whoever desires, let him take of the water freely. Now, there is a condition for the invitation. Do you see it in the text? In the text, there's a condition for that invitation. Does anyone would like to share what that condition is? It desire, okay. Thirst, a desire. You, a desire can 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 be also a thirst. Is is your desiring when you're thirsty? You want something. Thirst. The same author who wrote Revelation also wrote uh, the his uh, uh, Gospel of John tells us about thirst in his narrative uh, with the woman at, at the well. And John uh, shares us that story that, that Jesus really is after this woman, not because she's thirsty, but because she's spiritually thirsty. The condition in the text is to be thirsty for his coming. Thirsty for his coming. Let him who thirsts come. How do we do it then to be thirsty for the gospel? How do we do it to be thirsty for God? It is said that when you are thirsty, you are beginning to get dehydrated. Or maybe, dehyd or maybe you are dehydrated. But have you seen somebody who is dehydrated? I remember when Arlene was about one year old, she, be, she, she got dehydrated. Uh, she got the rotavirus, which, which really, she couldn't hold anything. Even water would come right back out. And anything you gave her would come right back out. And so she got so weak, we had no idea what it was. We took her to the hospital. They just looked at her eyes and they said, she's dehydrated. She had lost the, the shine. When you look at someone's eyes, there's that shine. It wasn't there. There was no water or very little water. Now, we know that we need to drink water. Amen? We are told you drink water as soon as you get up, right? And then you drink water throughout the, throughout the, the day. How many glasses of water are, are we supposed to take? Eight or more? <clears throat> but is it easy to drink water? Who said yes? <laughs> you know why it's easy for them? Because it's a habit to drink water. Amen. It's not normally, normally, it's not easy to drink water, because normally we drink water when we're thirsty, right? When we're, when, when we're thirsty. But how do I do it to be spiritually thirsty? How do you do it just to get into the habit of drinking water? You just do it. If you have to put yourself a reminder, drink, a, drink some water, just drink it. Just drink it. What is it to have thirst for the water of life? The majority of the time, we feel obligated to drink water. You know, my wife is, is, is always drinking water, always drinking water. When I first met her, she was carrying those big water bottles 
always drinking water. And up to today, she tells my kids, drink some water. You haven't drank water this morning. And in just a couple of hours past, drink some more water. And the same answer comes to them, I'm not thirsty. And the same answer replies, it's good for you. Drink some water. Drink some water. In the same way, friends, I better drink before she gets after me. <laughs> In the same way, friends, with spiritual things, like reading your devotion, your Sabbath school lesson, praying, reading the Bible, coming to church, some things we feel obligated to do, or we may not feel like doing, but it is still good for your soul. It is still good for your soul. A person who gets accustomed to drinking water will get to the point that they can't live without it. They got to have it. They got to have their water bottle wherever they go. Even if we're going just to Walmart, I, let me get my water. And there they go with their water, put it in their purse. In the same way with the living water, friends. When we, when we even, even when we don't feel like it, come to Jesus, read his word, pray to him, talk to him, come to church. Then it gets to a point where we can't live without it. Where we feel uncomfortable if, if something interrupts our habit and we miss our devotion, we're bothered throughout the day that we got to stop and talk to God. In our daily walk, we can see spiritual dehydration. We can see it among ourselves maybe or in the world for sure. Spiritual dehydration is displayed by unkindness, by overworry, being irritable. If you see someone who is spiritually dehydrated, you need to let them know, hey, you got to drink some of that living water. You better go to the source because you're spiritually dehydrated. That is why the psalmist tells us in Psalm 42, verse 2, My soul thirsts for God. Psalm 63, verse 1, O God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Even Psalms 143, verse 6, My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Have you ever seen when grass, when the earth is thirsty? The grass normally is brown or yellow. It's a thirsty land. Have you ever felt that your soul is like that brown grass? Thirsty. That's why Revelation 22 invites us. And Jesus even tells us, look at verse 7. There in Revelation 22, verse 7, you can see the urgentness in verse 7 where it says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Verse 12, and behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Verse 20, and he who testifies these things says, surely I am coming quickly. And our scripture reading, verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take the water freely. Jesus is saying, I'm coming, I'm coming quickly. And the bride and, and the thirsty soul says, come. Jesus says, Jesus says, I'm coming. And the thirsty soul says, well, come, Lord. Come. Come. When Jesus tells us and when we are reminded, I'm coming, do we say, come, Lord? Come to my life? Do we tell others? How many here have received Christ into your heart, into your life? I want to see a show of hands. How many here have received Christ? All right. Very good. Amen. Now look at, now look at the insert, the, the meditation on your bulletin. Then, then this applies to every single one of us who raise our hands. There in the meditation taken from the Acts of the Apostles, page 110 and 111. Everyone who has received Christ, that's all of us, 
is called to work for the salvation of his fellow men. The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. We're there from Revelation 22, verse 17. The charge to give this invitation includes the entire church. Amen. The charge to give this invitation includes the entire church. Everyone who has heard the invitation is to echo the message from hill and valley saying, Come, come, come. Long has God waited for the spirit of service to take possession of the whole church. Not, not, not just part of the church. Because I believe that the spirit has taken possession on part of this church. But not the whole church. On part of it. I, amen. I do believe that. And not just this church. Most churches, most Adventist churches, there is a part that the Holy Spirit has taken possession. But long has God waited for the spirit of service to take possession of the whole church so that everyone shall be working for him according to their ability. When the members of Christ, when the members of the church of God do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad in fulfillment of the gospel commission, the whole world will soon be warned and the Lord Jesus will return to this earth with power and great glory. Amen and amen, friends. Everyone who has received Christ is called to work for the salvation of his fellow men. Why are you here today? Why, why are you in this church and not in the church just a couple of yards right here? Or a couple of blocks down there? Why are you in this church? Does God have a, fi a final movement? Does God have a final church? A final message? You are aware and you know this. And we owe it to others to get to hear it. Others need to know. Others need to know. We're not, we're not imposing it, <laughs> dumping it on others, no. But we need to give them the invitation. We owe it to them. Hey, there is, there is good news. There is clarity in the confusion of Christianity. Amen. There is. So we come to God for two reasons. To know what the Bible says, to be biblically literate, to know clearly what the Bible says. There, there is understanding and, and clarity in Christianity, in the Word of God, among all the confusion of denominations. There is clarity in the Word of God. We come to God to know what the Bible says. But we come to God also to drink from the living water, to feed my soul. The world is full of people spiritually dehydrated, friends. Even myself, at times, have had a thirsty heart. This past week, wasn't an easy week and some concerns and some problems that I can't do anything about. But sometimes there are things that happen in your personal life that just drain you. Sometimes it feels like the life is just sucked out of you when you hear certain news. And you feel spiritually dehydrated. One can become spiritually dehydrated and have an empty soul. And that's why we need to ask God for that living water. Come to Him to regain our trust in Him and not in ourselves. That's why we need to, like, like that Samaritan woman where she left the pot. She went for water, but she left it because she was filled with the living water. Not just 
regular H2O that we can get anywhere, no. She was filled with the love, with the hope, with the Holy Spirit. We see and hear of all problems, of all kinds of problems that exist in the world. And we hear and maybe even see of ideas and promises of politicians, of world leaders, of how this world can be a better world or a better country. But we know that the only solution, the only solution to our problems, whether they're in our country, whether they're in our home, whether they're in our state, in our schools, in our personal lives, in our denomination, the only solution to our problems is for Jesus to return. That's the only solution. Amen. The only solution is for Christ to come. So we need to invite others to come, and we need to echo these words of Revelation, come, come, come and see. Friends, this is why we share literature. This is why we stream services. This is why we are having these meetings that began last night. Because we want to invite people, come and see for yourself what the Bible says. We're not obligating people. We're not asking people to change. We're just letting people know, come and see what God can do in your heart, in your life. We owe it to them to ask them to come and see. And that's why last night, Pastor Michael has, has started a seminar and will continue, as it was mentioned during the announcements, until the 20th, except for two days and Thursdays. And we continue tonight. We continue tonight at 6 o'clock. Come and see and drink from the living water. And so I want to just invite you, friends, come. Not because maybe you're thirsty. If you're thirsty, especially come. But come because you need it. Come because we need to be filled, filled with that living water. And so let's also, as we come to others, come with me. Come with me. As I seek to be filled by the living water, as I seek to understand the living word, as I seek a better relationship with Jesus, come with me. And so tonight we continue, friends, and I just want to appeal to you, as the verses here say, and Jesus is saying, and the Spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who thirsts say, come. And who desires, whoever desires, let him take the water of life for free. Freely. All you have to do is come. All you have to do is open your heart. All you have to do is be willing. So my prayer and desire is to come to Jesus. If you're thirsty, because you need it. If you're not thirsty, because you still need it. Because we drink water whether we need it or not. Because it's good for us. Even much more the living water. Which will save our souls. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven. Lord God Almighty. Lord I thank you very much. For your invitation to come to you. Help us O oh Lord. To recognize that whenever maybe we may be thirsty, our soul may be dried up, overwhelmed with problems and spiritually dehydrated, to come to you, Lord, because we need to be, we need to be filled with your presence, with your spirit. And help us, O oh Father, to bring to others, invite others to come as well, and experience the joy that there is in knowing the truth of what the Bible says, in knowing that a relationship with you 
makes the biggest difference in the, in the world. So now, Lord, I ask that you be with everyone here, especially those who have not given their heart to you, that, that, that they may come to you. Bless your church and continue to bless the meetings that we have begun. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.